this presentation, I'm going to discuss uh, the adoption of uh, several communication technologies, such as uh, the long range LoRa and uh, IEEE 802.15.4 for uh, uh, smart cities and IoT scenarios. Uh, this is the outline of my presentation. I will first focus my attention on uh, the smart public lighting service and its connection with the, the Internet of Things. Then I will uh, discuss uh, uh, the communication technologies and the network intelligence that uh, are needed to support such uh, services. I will show a couple of uh, real-world implementation and then I will draw some conclusions. Uh, these activities has, have been carried out in conjunction with the colleagues of uh, an Italian company, Y4B, Y4 for Business, which is active in the fields of uh, smart public lighting and the Internet of Things. Okay, what is uh, uh, smart lighting? Uh, uh, the smart lighting service uh, allows to uh, remotely control the light intensity of each uh, light pole uh, independently of the other and to um, implement smart behaviors such, such as uh, the possibility to control the light intensity and to increase uh, or reduce light intensity only when and where needed. But uh, how do we move from a traditional light infrastructure to a smart light infrastructure? We need, first of all, uh, of course, a control center, which is in charge of managing the service. And we need a communication network uh, that interconnects uh, the control center with the light infrastructure. But, OK, we need a communication network. Which kind of communication network? Should we use a wired communication network realized by means of fibers, cables, or power lines, for instance? Well, this is not a good idea because uh, for this kind of applications, uh, wired networks are costly. You have uh, uh, to, to lay cables, are problematic. Uh, you, you have um, difficult for the maintenance. Uh, and in the case of power line, you can have uh, also grid generated uh, disturbances. Uh, these uh, network, wire, uh, wired networks are not fle flexible because if you want to add a new light pole, you have to lay a new cable, which is not very convenient. And uh, moreover, when you lay a cable, you are connecting uh, one point with another point. So you are realizing a point-to-point -point communication. You are realizing a network which is dedicated to that service, which is, again, is not very convenient. Wireless networks, yes, of course, because they are cheaper. You don't have to lay cables. They are flexible. You can add a new light pole whenever you want, provided that, uh, of course, the, light, the new light pole is uh, uh, under the coverage of uh, the wireless technology. And uh, uh, once you have a wireless uh, network, uh, you can use uh, the same technology to provide also other services. You are opening a door towards uh, uh, IoT services, for instance. In fact, once you have a smart light pole that can communicate with uh, a control center, for instance, by means of a, a communication, wireless communication technology, you can use the same uh, uh, wireless connectivity to collect data from cars, for instance, for vehicle-to-vehicle infrastructure communication, or from, uh, uh, or from um, uh, uh, smart parking lots, or from smart uh, bike racks, and, and so on. So, uh, sorry. So the wireless light infrastructure becomes uh, the nervous systems of smart cities. And uh, it enables, it enables uh, uh, IoT services. OK, wireless is good, but which kind uh, uh, of uh, technology and which uh, uh, network uh, architecture? Should we use cellular networks? Uh, for this kind of service, this is not the best solution. Why? Because uh, they have coverage problems in many countries. This is an example taken from uh, Kuala Lumpur, where uh, the company with which I'm collaborating, Y4B, is deploying a smart public lighting infrastructure. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, uh, several gray, gray zones uh, that are zones where the um, cellular network does not provide any coverage. So in that zone, the public lighting would not work. Uh, the service and the cost, if uh, we rely on uh, a cellular network, uh, depend on third parties because uh, the, network op the light operator is different from the network operator. So if the network operator decides, decides to increase the cost, uh, the light operator has to pay, cannot do nothing but to pay. 
Should we use a, a technology specifically designed for IoT services, such as uh, SIG, Fox, or, or LoRa? Uh, not even. In the case of SIG, so for instance, we still have coverage problem. This is the area of Boston. The, uh, the blue uh, region represents the coverage of SIG, Fox. As you can see, only Boston is covered, part of the sea, but only Boston. Uh, we, we could not run, uh, we, we could not rely on SIGSO for other cities uh, nearby Boston. And even in Boston, you have many holes in the coverage, so we, we could not rely on this technology. Moreover, um, again, uh, in this case, you, even is, uh, also in this case, the network is not yours, you pay, you pay a rate. What about LoRa and other similar technology? Okay, in this case, you can build your own network, so you can you are the owner of the network. Still, you have coverage problem. Why? I will show. I'm going to show you a, a, an experimental test bed that, that, that we carried in Bologna. Uh, this is the engineering faculty in Bologna. We placed the LoRa transmitter on top of the um, engineering school tower, which is quite uh, high, and the engineering faculty is on top of a hill. So we are the, the transmitter is very high over the city. Uh, on, on your right, you see the perspective, the, the view from the transmitter. Uh, it seems that uh, the propagation conditions are very favorable, but indeed, this is not true. This is, uh, okay, this is not very clear. This is the map uh, of Bologna. The colored dots represent the, the received power level in different points. The blue dot uh, is the transmitter position. Uh, as you can see, the the uh, red dots uh, represent uh, um, location in which uh, the receiver power is very low, is critical. And we have red dots uh, also close to the transmitter, owing to the presence of building. In Bologna, we have, of course, a, a lot of big buildings with thick walls uh, that uh, represent an obstacle for the propagation. Um, and there are um, several segments of main roads that are not covered at all because they are, uh, the propagation is, uh, um, is uh, prevented by, by the presence of, uh, of uh, buildings. So even LoRa is not useful for this kind of application. So what else? Mesh networks. The solution in this case is the adoption of a, of a mesh network. In this case, the control center is connected not to all light poles, but to a, a subset of selected light poles, those that, have, that experience good propagation condition. These light poles are the coordinators. Then, uh, once, uh, maybe I can use the arrow, one, uh, the coordinator receives the command from the control center, it can propagate the command toward its neighbors, and the neighbors to their neighbors, and so on. So the um, common propagates uh, up by up. And uh, since uh, the light poles are uh, close one to the other, they experience good propagation condition. They are in line of sight. So we do not uh, have coverage problems. Moreover, uh, the lighting operator has a full control of the service cost and of the network infrastructure because the lighting infrastructure itself becomes the communication infrastructure. This is an example. The control center sends the command to, to the coordinator and then a coordinator to its neighbor and then to its neighbor and so on. This is why the system works. This is an example um, of a real implementation in uh, Vietnam, uh, where Y4B is, uh, has implemented this technology. As you can see, uh, the uh, dimming is very synchronous. And uh, the, the information in this case uh, propagates pole by pole. This is uh, the um, network architecture. It is based on the IEEE 800.2.15.4 communication architecture. Light poles are organized in clusters. This is an example with the three clusters. This is the first cluster, the second, and the third. Each cluster has a coordinator, which uh, um, is uh, uh, able to, 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 con to, to communicate with uh, the control center. And the information propagates from the control center to the coordinator and then up by up to all poles of, of the cluster. 
This is a second example. I do not spend uh, many words on this. This is a, a, an implementation in, uh, in, um, in Italy, Monte Chiarugolo. The wool uh, public light infrastructure has been enhanced. And this is an example of economic impact of this technology. In the, the first year of life of this uh, new infrastructure, the 2014, the, um, the power consumption, the orange bar, dropped from uh, uh, 1 million and a half, more or less, to less than uh, uh, 400,000, with a saving of uh, uh, 76%. So the cost of the infrastructure is more or less pay, is paid in a few years uh, by the money you save uh, saving energy. Uh, the last point, uh, once you have a wireless network, very capillary in the, in, in, uh, in the city, you can use the same network to provide additional services. You can collect information from wireless sensors, so you can uh, detect uh, the rubbish level uh, and, and perform bus management. You can monitor the air quality. You can implement the smart parking service, and so on. You can implement, uh, in few words, the IoT services. So to conclude, uh, wireless mesh network appears the best solution for uh, smart light infrastructure. The smart light infrastructure evolves in such a way into a communication network. And once you have a communication, a wireless communication network in the city, you can provide also additional services. You can provide IoT services.